Numbers chapter 33. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramses in the first month. On the fifteenth day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn, which the Lord had smitten among them. Upon their gods also the Lord executed judgments. And the children of Israel removed from Ramses and pitched in Succoth. And they departed from Succoth and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. And they removed from Etham and turned again into Pihahiroth, which is before bel Zephon, and they pitched before Migdal, and they departed from before Pihahiroth, and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, and went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etham, and pitched in Marah. And they removed from Marah, and came unto Elam. And in Elam were twelve fountains of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they pitched there. And they removed from Elam, and encamped by the Red Sea. And they removed from the Red Sea, and encamped in the wilderness of Sin. And they took their journey out of the wilderness of Sin, and encamped in Dafka. And they departed from Dafka, and encamped in Elish. And they removed from Elish, and encamped at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. And they departed from Rephidim, and pitched in the wilderness of Sinai. And they removed from the desert of Sinai, and pitched at Kibroth Adava. And they departed from Kibroth Adava, and encamped at Hazaroth. And they departed from Hazaroth and pitched in Rithma. And they departed from Rithma and pitched in Rimon Peraz. And they departed from Rimon Peraz and pitched in Libna. And they removed from Libna and pitched at Rissa. And they journeyed from Rissa and pitched in Kehilatha. And they went from Kehilatha and pitched in Mount Shafer. And they removed from Mount Shafer and encamped in Hereda. And they removed from Hereda and pitched in Machilath. And they removed from Machilath and encamped at Tehath. And they departed from Tehath and pitched at Terah. And they removed from Terah and pitched in Mithka. And they went from Mithka and pitched in Hashmona. And they departed from Hashmona and encamped at Mazaroth. And they were departed from Mazaroth and pitched in Benajakin. And they removed from Benajakin and encamped at Horhag Idgad. And they removed from Hor Hak Idgad and pitched in Jot Batha. And they removed from Jot Batha and encamped at Abrona. And they departed from Abrona and encamped at Ezion Gaber. And they removed from Ezion Gaber and pitched in the wilderness of Zin, which is Kadesh. And they removed from Kadesh and pitched in Mount Hor and the edge of the land of Edom. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there. In the fortieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the fifth month. And Aaron was an hundred and twenty and three years old when he died in Mount Hor. And King Arad the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel, and they departed from Mount Hor and pitched in Zalmona. And they departed from Zalmona and pitched in Punon. And they departed from Punon and pitched in Oboth. And they departed from Oboth and pitched in Lejibarim in the border of Moab. And they departed from Lim and pitched in Dibungad. And they removed from Dibungad and encamped in Elmon de Blatham. And they removed from Elmon de Blatham and pitched in the mountains of Abiram before Nebo. And they departed from the mountains of Abiram and pitched in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. And they pitched by Jordan from Beth Shemeth even unto Abel Shittim in the plains of Moab. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and saying to them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more ye shall give the more inheritance and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. 
Numbers 34. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come unto the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan with the coasts thereof. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin, along by the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the utmost coast of the salt sea eastward, and your border shall turn from the south to the ascent of Akrabim, and pass on to Zin, and the going forth thereof shall be from the south to Kadesh Barnea, and shall go on to Hazar Adar, and pass on to Asmon, and the border shall fetch a compass from Asmon unto the river of Egypt, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, ye shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border, and this shall be your north border. From the great sea you shall point out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath, and the goings forth of the border shall be to Zedad. And the border shall go on to Zaphron, and the goings out of it shall be at Hazar Enon. This shall be your north border. And ye shall point out your east border from Hazar Enon to Shepham. And the coast shall go down from Shepham to Riblah, on the east side of Ain. And the border shall descend, and shall reach into the side of the sea of Chinnereth eastward. And the border shall go down to Jordan, and the goings out of it shall be at the salt sea. This shall be your land with the coast thereof round about. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which ye shall inherit by lot which the Lord commanded to give unto the nine tribes and to the half tribe. For the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to their fathers, have received their inheritance. And half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half tribe have received their inheritance on this side, Jordan, near Jericho, eastward, toward the sun rising. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land into you, Eliezer the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun. And ye shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. And the names of the men are these, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and of the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel the son of Amihud, of the tribe of Benjamin, Elidad the son of Kishlon, and the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Bukai the son of Jogli. And the prince of the children of Joseph, for the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Heniel, the son of Ephod. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Kemuel, the son of Shiftan. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Elizaphan, the son of Parnak. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Issachar, Peltiel, the son of Azan. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahihud, the son of Shalomai. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Pedhael, the son of Emihud. These are they whom the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Matthew chapter 7. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye, thou hypocrite? First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits, to men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles. Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them. 
Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not should be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribe. Matthew chapter 8. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holds, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And there was a good way off from them, and heard of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to the possessed of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. Job 32. So these three men ceased to answer Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, of the kindred of Ram, 
Against Job was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than God. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. Now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore I was afraid, and durst not show you mine opinion. I said, They should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Therefore I said, Hearken to me. I also will show mine opinion. Behold, I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reasons, whilst ye searched out what to say. Yea, I attended unto you, and behold, there was none of you that convinced Job, or that answered his words. Lest ye should say, We have found out wisdom. God thrusteth him down, not man. Now he hath not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speeches. They were amazed. They answered no more. They left off speaking. When I had waited, for they spake not, but stood still and answered no more, I said, I will answer also my part. I also will show mine opinion. For I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine which hath no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man. For I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away.